Woodward Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids, all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. What up, though, people? Thank you for kicking off your day with Wake Up Woodward. We got the whole starting five here. It's only appropriate as we celebrate 326 day. Hey, we got hey. Mr. Darren McCarty on the back wall fight night at the Joe. Let's go, man. Let's go. We got a packed show for you guys. As always, chat family, you guys are a very, very big and important part of this show. Definitely smash that like button. And once you do, encourage someone else to do the same. Get your comments in all show. You guys already know we want to feature you. We got, like I said, we got the whole crew. We got Mr. Flannel Sam. Flannel. 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 Let's rock. Matthew Broder, the voice of. Good morning. Bro. Hey. Bro. I'm working on the voice. Bro. We got the golden Bro. voice in the world. Let next. me hear that what up, though. What up, though? There he goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got Detroit's number one draft pick, Mr. KG in the sound you know booth. It. What up, though? Let's go. And Wilbur Sports MVP, J J J J J B McCart McCart. Oh my God! <laughs> what's, up, what's up, fellas? Let's go. You want to tell the people what we're going to be talking about today, Mr. Brown? I would Brody? love to. Let's I would go. love to. We're, we're talking about the anniversary of Fight Night at the Joe. Let's go. We might be having a little DMAC cameo at the end. We might. He might be sneaking in here to, uh, to, to, to relive this night. We're going to be talking JJ McCarthy. He had his pro day at the end of last week. He keeps getting rumored higher and higher in this NFL draft. It's big news. We're talking Cam <laughs> Sutton. We got to relive, or not relive, revisit the comments Rod Wood made yesterday. The more information we learned about Cam Sutton and where he was when yeah. that warrant was out. Wow. We got triple threat with KG. KG, the man in the sound booth. The return of triple threat Tuesday. Damn we'll right. have that at 830. And then at nine o'clock, we got a very special guest. He wrote this book right to the side of me. Wendell Brown Sr., he has an incredible, incredible story to share with you. I encourage you all to stay around at 9 o'clock when he joins us in studio. That's what we're talking about, Kool-Aid and Sam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I cannot wait. Let's go. And Jess, you know what? Were you in the building for the Fight Night at the Joe, uh, the production that ESPN did, when they had them both at uh, Fifth Avenue? I was not there, but I've oh. obviously seen the, seen the footage. It's, uh, yeah. it's something special. It was, it was really, really epic. It was cool to see them kind of make – um, as big a deal about this as it is, because I know it means a lot to us. And you know what? I, I get it. There's some history with you and D-Mac. But this moment right here, will this, if you're talking about your Hall of Fame of moments, will this at least make that Hall of Fame? Yes, but let me give it a second. I will take it. We will take it. it. <laughs> can, I, can I give a slight, a slight caveat? Because I'm, of, of, of course I will. I... Obviously, this was a great moment. This was something that uh, helped propel the Red Wings to a phenomenal run. But this moment was only as iconic because they did win that game with Darren McCarty getting, getting the uh, game winner in overtime. Ooh. They did beat the Avs in the playoffs, and then they won the Stanley Cup. So you can say that this was a driving force and maybe galvanizing the team and then winning it all. But you can also say that you, all, you can give more credit to the team for finishing the job after a couple of, or like three really, really disappointing winning playoff runs back to back to back so it all goes in together into what was one of the most memorable seasons of any Detroit sports team ever the 97 wings yeah definitely man it's D-Mac day here at Woodward Sports it should be D-Mac day all across Detroit <laughs> I know the Avalanche, this is a day they probably try to forget as well. Yeah, yeah this is where the Avalanche, they, they turtle on March 26th. Uh, that's turtle. I see what you did there, man. I see what you did there. But uh, the Pistons. Yuck. They lost to the New York Knicks. How about that game out of Dante DiVincenzo, nope, baby? Nope. <laughs> no, no. How about it? No. 40 piece? He ordered nope. a 40 piece Nuggets at Madison Square Garden? Look, I told the people, I told the crew before the show starts, we're spending about that much time on the Detroit Pistons. All you need to know about me, go back to yesterday's episode, listen to the chin music. You will see how I feel about these Detroit Pistons right now. Yep. I mean, the reality is, is the last couple of nights, that's a G League team. That's a team that could not beat any NBA team in the even. league right now that could probably not beat very many NBA teams in the history of the NBA. So I, it looks like 
especially with Asar being out for the season, Isaiah Stewart being out for the season, Simone Fontecchio, who knows if he's going to play, Kay, Jalen Duran, that this is going to be a 12-70 and 70 team. And uh, more on that later. But this team as currently constructed will not win another game the rest of the year. Yeah, no chance. Yeah, and it sucks, bro. They were at 3-1, and one, a good stretch. They were playing well. It looked like they were going to definitely be on this flannel road to 18 wins. Yeah. And now it looks like they're going to set uh, the franchise low in wins. And that that is just, uh, ugh. you talking about every year there's restore, worse, worse, worse. Get an article on it, guys. Check out WoodwardSports.com. They got some tough decisions to make, and they need to do it because Detroit Pistons fans, Detroit sports fans, they don't deserve this. I'm they excited don't. to hear what Rod Beard has to say tomorrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm sure he's got some thoughts. Yeah. He'll, he'll say it professionally, but he'll know he'll know where the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. The Tigers, man. They got another game coming up, huh? Yeah. They play tonight, uh, today, actually, 1235. Uh, they start open their season on Thursday, so these are the fi final couple innings that they'll be out there in spring training. They've had incredible spring training. I'm excited to see them back up here in Detroit next week for their home opener. I'm also excited to see them on Bally every game and not have to uh, uh, live vicariously through all the other beat writers who are down in Florida. Yes, I'm so excited for Thursday, too. I mean, obviously, they got another spring training game today, but give me opening day. Please. Yes, give me Tarek Skubal going up against a man making his, not his major league debut, but his first start of his career on opening day. So uh, that's an advantage for the, for the Tigers right there. Go into Chicago and win that series to start the season and give the Tigers a winning record going into their home opener next Friday, which we will all be at. Man, the vibes around the city will be immaculate if that happens. They'll be regardless. We're Bro. kicking off that party. This yes, show, sir. Wake Up Woodward, is kicking off the party downtown. Let's go. I'm excited. We want to see the chat family down there as well. Mm -hmm. Music City Hall, the tent party, is going to be the place to be to kick off your Detroit Tigers home opening day. Flannel, I mean, you just got me pumped up for that game, bro, even more. I, I am not? so hyped up for that day. And uh, DCFC, Detroit City Football Club, their next game is Saturday. At 11? Where are they at? In, in uh, Indy? No, at the Indy 11. That's the ah, name of their football okay. club. Yep. So just a quick note, they play this weekend. They're now 1-1 one one on the season, I believe. Okay. Got to keep supporting our, our friends over at DCFC, the Northern Guard, Le Rouge, all our friends down there. Neil will be on the calls for the remainder of the season. Hey, dope. Let's go. The, the golden voice, Mr. Neil golden. Rule. Talk about a ride, man. That, that guy has been on one, and I am happy for him and his success. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Golden Grizzlies, Pistons games, DCFC. And uh, moving on, we have to talk about some Lions stuff, man, yeah. some Lions news. I'm going to defer to you. Yeah, let's Mr. start off with some Prudential positive news. Writer and reporter. Let's start off with some positive news. Yes, sir. As reported by Doc Macaroon, I hinted that they would be revealed before the draft. Doc gave us an exact date. John Macaroon, he oh. might be in the chat. The Detroit Lions are going to unveil their new jerseys on April 18th. Stop it. Swear. Let's go. Swear. Let's we don't go. know what they're going to look like. Uh, Rod Wood didn't hint at much. He said it's going to be an ode to the traditional uniforms with a little twist. So uh, we'll see what that means. But they're being revealed on April 18th. I believe it's at a season tickets pass hold, a season ticket holders special event. So what is that? About three weeks, and we'll know what these uh, yeah. new uniforms for Detroit looks like. Oh, that's. Uh, I mean. I don't know if I'm how excited I could necessarily be. As long as the Lions still continue to win, I don't really care what they're wearing. But selfishly, and a lot of people probably are going to disagree with me on this, I didn't love the blueberry uniforms, even though they technically <laughs> gave them a lot of a lot of uh, good luck. I just I would like when I hear "Ode to the Traditional," I'm a little bit of a vanilla guy who loves tradition and nostalgia. So give me those traditional <laughs> Lions uniforms every single game of the week. I don't care what any of y'all say. So, so it's silver, silver. If they going back to traditional, it's probably silver, Honolulu. Lulu blue mix in there somewhere so yeah Let's what about what about bringing back the old lions logo the one they put on those uh those new helmets they had this season. no, no i like you. the newer logo it's more fierce the older one was kind of like yeah we're a losing team <laughs> <laughs> the logo looks like a weak line i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, like, it does. can we just get something completely <laughs> sideways just something totally different like i to skip over all the traditional stuff you know maybe do black or something odd you know yeah, so you talking about going like this then, huh? Yeah, give me that line. Yeah. That, that yeah. looks like the king of the jungle, like, that type of line. Exactly. Yep, that lion shop set up Premier Pet Supply, too, by Swear. the way. Swear. Yeah, the best pet store. Swear. Only the best for the best, right? <laughs> but, I so want to see J-Mo in that number one uniform, though. Whatever color the new unis are, I want to see J-Mo wearing that number one. Definitely. So you're not putting the blueberries in your Hall of Fame, then, huh? No. 
but they, they, they won a lot of games. <laughs> And I'm not going to be outraged if they if they have a lot of games with the uh, Blueberry Traditions. Again, as long as they win, I'm 100% fine. I just like the Ode to Tradition. That's all. Do you like the marshmallows? Well, those are, yes, I actually like those. Cool. Those are those are sweet. Those are all whites. <laughs> I, I don't know what, what, what it is. Like, all white, I think, is a more aesthetically pleasing combination oh. than all Honolulu blue. <laughs> you got something to say about that, Whoops. KG? Nah, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you like all white, huh? Nah. Like... <laughs> Damn. We What's all that you, you say, KG? It. I'm like, whoops. Yeah, right. Welcome <laughs> to that chair flannel. <laughs> We're headed to the cookout, baby. <laughs> you know who we don't know where he's headed? We Ooh. really don't know where Cam Sutton is. Man. But Rod Wood yesterday in an interview first with Dan Miller of Fox 2 and then speaking in a broader press conference to the media, shared some details that I think surprised a lot of people in Detroit and a lot of questions are now coming out of that, that he was at, he was at Allen Park in the facility when the team learned about there was a warrant out for his arrest. He was training. He was in the training room. I don't know if he means he was working out or he was getting work on by the medical staff, but he was in the training room. And when they found out, they approached him. They said, Cam, like, we recommend you, you, you got to go turn yourself in, get counsel. Um, it, you got to put an end to this. And that was the last they heard from Cam Sutton. He's left. They've been out of contact with him. Obviously, the police can't get a hold of him. He hasn't turned himself in. So I don't know what what – do you guys think about this and the, the there are questions around what should detroit have done at that moment like and i don't know all the uh jurisdiction rules between police offices like should detroit have done more to keep him in the building or something where is cam does this tell you he's alive like does this give us a little more hope yes. that at least he's not harmed himself or he's somewhere yeah. unalived um, what do you guys think? It's this is like, weird. You know, we, we at first we were wondering, like, has anybody heard from him in over yeah. two weeks? So to be able to hear that update, it's like, okay, they did have contact with him within those two weeks. But to know that he was in the building, that was like, whoa, shocking. Like, yeah. seriously? Yeah. Um, I'm not a legal expert from some things I've seen from other people who claim to be legal experts. Supposedly there's, you know, the, the ability to um, arrest him. Uh, on a warrant from another state is not something that our police are going to do. I don't know yeah. what the extradition laws are and things of that nature. But that uh, Rod Wood did mention that they continue to urge him and urge him to turn himself in and do uh, effectively the right thing, similar to what you stated as well in your Tim music yesterday, KG. Um, and that after 24 hours of him being kind of non-cooperative and kind of shutting down the communications when they decided, you know what, let's release him. I, this situation all around is a very, very, very weird situation. Yeah, it's it's tough. I've yeah. at, at first I kind of thought, and again, this is non-legal expert flannel Sam, where you're almost thinking like, shouldn't Rod Wood maybe be get the authorities on the on the on the ring so that they're out there so they could uh, take Cam Sutton into custody? But if it's something that Detroit police, with when it's in a war in another state, aren't going to bother themselves with, or they're not able to do that, I understand that. If I had to make a guess, and this is just speculation, maybe when Cam Sutton had that conversation, he might have been adamant that, like, yes, I'm going to turn myself in. You can, you, you can trust me. And Cam Sutton, from all that we know prior to all this going on, is a high-character guy. And, if, and you don't want to tell another grown man, like, force him to do something. They just probably trusted that Cam Sutton would do the right thing. And right now, Cam Sutton at least presumably has not and is still on the run. So it's just a very, very weird situation. Something that I've never really seen before, and it involves our Lions and Cam Sutton. It's just, I feel like I'm living in bizarro world, man. It yeah. is wild. It's and I wild. think it's important to know, Radwood made it clear, the reason they cut him, and they're going to deal with the legal ramifications, and maybe there's money that they can get back in the future, but the decision wasn't financially related only. They cut him once they weren't able to get a hold of him. Once he disappeared... Yeah and they couldn't reach him, he wasn't responding. That next day is when they decide to make that cut. Um, designated a post-June 1st release, which means they spread his hit, his salary out, um, whatever that hit would be among two uh, across two years, the next two years, versus uh, all of it in this year. So yeah. but I heard uh, there was a little to... strategy to that, but they cut him because he wasn't involved with the team. Nothing exactly related to his legal situation yet. I heard they were going to try to void the, the eight million that was uh, owed to him or something like that because he didn't live up to his contract or something. Yeah, I, my, my guess is they, and I don't know all the details. My my guess is that they can only do that once the legal situation plays out. Once they know 
all right, he is guilty of these things, uh, you know, that happened a couple days before he was guaranteed all this money. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know all those details, but my guess is this has to play out a little bit more before they make that move. Right, right. Well, I mean, in this situation, I don't think as much more the Lions organization could have done um, as they're just the employer. Like if Woodward Sports found out I had a warrant out and they were like, hey, Ken, you know, you should probably turn yourself in. Can they hold me? I mean, technically, yeah, but why would they do that? You know, they're just the employer. Um, and they probably were under the assumption that he would turn himself in, much to what Sam said. Like, um, you know, it, it, it's it, it's a domestic dispute. What he did was horrible, but it's something that can you can come back from. So I, I'm pretty sure they expected, okay, he'll get the help he needs. He'll turn himself in, and then we can go from there. But you know he, him disappearing afterwards is is kind of crazy man and you just hope everything's okay and we hope that this situation gets resolved fairly quickly but the lions did what they had to do yeah this this is a situation i'm hoping gets some resolution fast cam sutton man turn yourself in i like i i i everything that you said yesterday kg was so so spot on turn yourself in whether you believe there's some responsibility on your behalf or not, turn yourself in, man. This has gone on too long. The victim and the children, they don't deserve this. The mm -hmm. legal system deserves its justice. And, and, and if you believe on any level there's some aspect of exoneration do your way, you can't get that by what you're doing right now. None of this is good on any level. On any level. I was just about to say, Kool-Aid, you took the words right out of my mouth. The more and more things come out, especially with uh, uh, Rod Wood saying that Cam Sutton was in the building, yeah. the more it looks like these are not the actions, or at least the perceived actions, of what you would think an innocent man would do, or a man not who believed there was some sort of exoneration coming his way. I'm not saying, obviously, we got to let it all play itself out, but... Uh, you're He's so on right. the run. He's on the run. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so bizarre for an NFL football player yeah. to, like even just like be able to be on the run for as long as he has. It's just a weird situation. Yeah. The yeah. longer he's on the run, like Chef just said in the chat, uh, and again, I don't know the federal prison, all the rules, but the longer he's on the run, this just does not look good. Uh, hope this gets resolved soon. Very soon. Very soon for all parties involved. Man, I think that was definitely well stated and well said. I know in our next segment, it's like there are certain topics. It is very difficult to segue. You know, yeah. but, you know, the next segment, we are talking about uh, J.J. McCarthy and his uh, pro day and hey. uh, some of the NFL and NFL draft expectations for him. But first, we have a message from Planet Fitness. Absolutely. Planet Fitness is home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. At Planet Fitness, you'll experience a squeaky clean gym that has tons of equipment, a full-body workout in just 30 minutes, and all memberships include fitness training. You get all of this for only $10 a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's a Planet Fitness close by. There are more than 50 in Metro Detroit and thousands more throughout the world. It's Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Central. Central. Buying your first film at Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories, some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy, you're buying into a Feldman family. With more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, ah! Tweet us. Hop on the YouTube chat. Slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. We are the network for Detroit. By Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. 
the new glorious ice water glorious. bubble pass pre-roll now with diamonds constantly pushing to create the best cannabis experience the perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure thc diamond dust allowing flower with the highest herbs making the best even better glorious cannabis check us out at your local retailer or glorious canna two ends.com welcome back to wake up woodward thank you guys for kicking off your day with the crew we got the whole starting five in the building we have a packed show for you all i'm really looking forward to uh the interview with wendell brown senior author athlete and leader hey i honestly i really hope you guys stick around at nine o'clock his story is unbelievable he was imprisoned in china wrongfully detained for three years and he's honestly one of the most positive guys i've ever met you guys are going to want to hear this story yeah i can't wait i can't wait you know and as always chat family thank you guys for kicking around with us man Go on ahead and smash that like button if you have. Encourage somebody else in the chat family to do the same. But we got to talk about one Mr. J.J. McCarthy in this pro day. Hey, shout out to Wendell Brown. I see you, brother. Welcome to welcome welcome to Wilbur Sports. But oh, uh, you guys start this convo. I'm gonna go uh, uh, welcome Wendell in. Definitely sharp too, man. Jeez. Oh yes, Wendell Brown is a sharp dressed man. But yes, uh, <laughs> JJ McCarthy. Obviously, Michigan just had their pro Four day, flannel. and uh, JJ McCarthy, as do most quarterback prospects. I mean, he showed out. He showed all of his all of his physical traits and his skills and everything. Made every throw, but. If you want to be skeptic, skeptic of, a, of a pro day, you can also say that Johnny Manziel famously had a great pro day. Zach Wilson had a, a great pro day. But the thing about J.J. McCarthy that I think is uh, intriguing as a draft prospect, when you look at quarterbacks that could go in the first round, you talk about six of them. And out of all six of them, J.J. McCarthy was, at least on an individual stats level, the least productive out of all of them. Caleb Williams won a Heisman in college. Jaden Daniels won a Heisman in college. Michael Penix and, and uh, Bo Nix, they were in New York for the uh, Heisman race. And Drake May, although he didn't put up huge numbers this season, still threw for more yards than J.J. and threw 38 touchdowns the uh, previous year before. But J.J. McCarthy, like I said, he's got all the tools. He's got the arm strength. He's got the size. He's got the accuracy. He's got the mobility, the ability to throw on the run, throw from the pocket, scramble, uh, designed runs. He pretty much uh, does has done it all. And even in his couple of seasons as a Michigan starter, I think his production has gotten a little bit underrated because in his two seasons, he threw 44 touchdowns and only nine interceptions combined. He was exceptionally good at taking care of the football. And oh, by the way, he had six games in the last two seasons where he had over three touchdowns, touchdown passes and zero interceptions, including this year against Alabama and some guys you may have heard of named Kool-Aid McKinstry, Terrion Arnold and Caleb Downs and the year before at Ohio State. So the pro day, it's definitely going to make a lot of people swoon because he just he, he looks great throwing a football against no defense in a uh, in a controlled environment with his own receivers and everything. But JB, I want you to uh, I, I want you to play, play this in a second. I just wanted to give you a reminder of some of the things that uh, JJ McCarthy can do and what he did when he was in college because his his highlight tape. If you look at his highlight tape. Some of those plays, they look almost uh, Mahomesian. I would say you got that, JB. Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. Look at this man throw. Look at this man. That deep ball against Purdue hits Donovan Edwards Ooh. right in Ooh. stride. And look at this next one, my favorite. Rolling to his left. Yeah. Throws an absolute dart to Roman Wilson. Perfect throw for a touchdown. This one, deep ball to Cornelius Johnson while he is covered wow. right on the money. Look at this man throw. Jeez. Left hash all the way to the right corner. Perfect throw to Roman Wilson for a touchdown. <laughs> this was not a good game by J.J., but look at that perfect throw to Roman Wilson for a touchdown. Hell to the victors. Hey. This one right here. Perfect throw to Roman Wilson. And look at this replay. Look at this replay. Right between those two defenders, an absolute dot. Look at this man go. This one I'm not a huge fan of because that might get picked in the NFL. It was a great play by Roman. We can, we can, uh, right. Look at that. Perfect that. throw past Cal Halliday's ear hole right to Colson Loveland for a touchdown. This one, making Col Colson Loveland makes a play. Great throw to him as well. This one. Right hash to left hash, Roman Wilson first down. We got this perfect throw up the seams to Colson Loveland between two defenders. And look at his running ability, mm. outruns a defensive back all the way to the corner of the end zone, touchdown right there. Wow. This one, Roland Wright hits Cornelius Johnson on the sidelines. 
He got a foot in. It was a first down. I was there. It was amazing. <laughs> Off of play action. <laughs> throw in the Washington game. The game that he only completed 10 passes. But look at that throw to Roman Wilson on the money. This one, huge first down. It was a kind of an easy throw, but still, he made it. All well and good. And this one, third and eight, big point of the game. This is what he can also do. Scrambles Look for a big go. first down. Look at this man go. Look at this man. And then this Dave, one on a designed Dave run. McCarthy. Another first down. Just going through defenders. Which one is this one? Oh, yeah, another throw at a big juncture in the game. Ooh. Hitting Colston Loveland when they were up by only seven. This is the throw that oh. kind of led to the Blake Quorum touchdown. He's bringing touchdown, back memories of which, our watch party. Oh, yeah. yeah, look at that. Play action, hits Colston Loveland right in stride. Knows he's a big target. And this one saved the game against Alabama. <laughs> Donovan <laughs> Edwards makes a I terrible throwback. But J.J. McCarthy with Dallas Turner barreling in on him, catches the pass while backpedaling, throws Off a perfect throw to Roman Wilson. He didn't get a lot of zip on it, but still, it was a perfect throw. The fact that that was complete and not a turnover, that is testament to J.J. McCarthy. This one hits Tyler Morris in stride so he can outrun two defenders to, for a touchdown. If he throws it behind him, it's not a touchdown. You look at this one. This one was tipped, but it still gets to Roman Wilson for a big gain. Absolutely unbelievable. This one, I would say, is like an easy throw that anybody could make, but still. You can, uh, you can uh, cut, cut this one off now, JB, because my point is, is that this is what J.J. McCarthy can do. You saw that in his pro day. You saw him make all the throws. You saw it at the combine, but he also did it in-game, and I get it. Every single quarterback prospect is going to have their array of highlights. But J.J. McCarthy, man, this is what NFL scouts see, making every single throw, his mobility off of designed runs, off of scrambles, deep balls, like left hash to right hash, like seam throws on the run in the pocket. This man can absolutely do it all. And do you know how, we, how, how you know that all of the uh, J.J. McCarthy people who always had him in a first round are going to be right, at least about his draft stock? Because this man is going in the top 10 guaranteed. This man might even go into the top five. So uh, yeah. this is all encapsulating as to why J.J. McCarthy is such an intriguing prospect. You know what? After all of that, <laughs> yes, I'm very convinced that J.J. is going to be a very fine, very fine top 10 prospect, but flannel. I did not know you had a career ahead of you in play-by-play. -play. That, well, that was amazing. Hey, you know. <laughs> I was sitting there like, yo. I will, day, day I will say McCarthy. this, though. Like, I watched every snap. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, had to do, I have to do it for work with all sports, but uh, Michigan football is my number one love. So I had a great time watching all of these highlights from the year. And this is just to show that, yes, I admitted in the beginning, was he as productive as the other guys who are going in, the, the other guys who are going in the, in, in the first round, all other five of them? Absolutely not. Can you say that, you know, he had the best supporting cast, J.J. McCarthy? Yes, you saw that because there were 18 players put into the uh, NFL Combine, and then you'll see guys like Will Johnson, uh, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, Rod Moore, sucks about his injury, by the way, Man. Colston Loveland, yeah. Donovan Edwards, you will see them be there next year and get drafted. My point is that we're not talking about that. We're talking about his NFL potential. And as I said, he's productive, he takes care of the football, he's got all the skill set, he's got the size, he's got the mobility, all of that which I've mentioned before, and he's done it more in games than you think. All you ever get sold is that Michigan, it was only the run game ever. All it was was mm -hmm. the, the run game. And I get it to some extent there were games where that was the case. And more maybe certainly last year when uh, Blake had over 1,400 and Donovan Edwards had over nine, 900. But this season, this season Michigan was more of a passing offense throughout the totality of the year than you think. And oh, by the way, in the Alabama game, J.J. McCarthy threw three touchdowns, no picks. And Blake Corum, although he made a huge run at the end and a huge uh, catch and run to uh, help send the game into overtime and a touchdown, he only had 83 rushing yards. J.J. McCarthy is going to be a great NFL quarterback. I am closer to the Ryan Armani side than most. I don't think he's going number one overall. I think it's going to be Caleb Williams, but J.J. McCarthy is a hell of a draft prospect. Yeah, and, and you know what? Just I'm so glad that you kind of went through that. You showed exactly what he's capable of doing because, honestly, it, it's almost like the Jamison Williams uh, situation where you need targets to be able to produce. And for J.J. McCarthy, it was almost as if they had him more in a game management style that didn't necessarily play to his full capabilities and mm -hmm. strengths and everything he was able to do at probably being able to go on ahead and say, you know what, yes, I can handle 30 passes a game, 25 passes a game, 20 passes a game. 
Uh, and instead, he just wound up making the biggest throws when the team needed him to, to make those big throws, whether Jim Harbaugh was there or not. Uh, we see, and there were games where, you know, I look at some of these other teams that we've played where Michigan was on the kind of a beneficial side of quarterbacks even botching things like handoffs between the running backs and such, as much as they handed the ball off. Um, it, you look at what J.J. McCarthy can do, especially when they allowed him to kind of let loose with the wheels, let loose with his arm. The guy has a cannon. He can throw it all over the field. I know one of the things we were talking about, and KG, you were talking about as well as some of our watch parties, was his touch on his throws. And to me, I believe that that becomes less of an issue when you're talking about the NFL because the speed of the game is a little bit faster. The hands are a lot more sure. Do you want to make sure that he can reel in some of those passes that sometimes can be just outside the stretch of the wide receiver? Definitely. But I think that the NFL actually helps him a little bit more than hurts him. All his skill sets seem ready to translate to the NFL. Oh, yes. And, uh, yep, and you, you, you uh, touched on it. We're going to uh, talk to uh, Wendell Brown when we get back. But uh, – his, if there's kind of been a knock about him is that sometimes those like five yard slat slants, he maybe zips them a little yeah, bit too fast, but yeah, some of them, ball. but he, here's, here's the thing. He had a weapon like Colston Loveland, who is going to be a first round pick as a, a first round pick as a future NFL tight end. And he's able to haul some of those in. So, and obviously when you get to the NFL, you're going to have better weapons than you had in college. So did you guys talk about him being 27 and one in his career in college? Talk about 27 it. and one. Talk about it. That's a winner. What, where is. does that rank him within uh, Michigan quarterbacks? Number one. Was that yeah. number one? Yeah. I think oh, he's yeah. the oh, yeah. third winningest quarterback in college football history in terms yeah. of winning percentage. Yeah. Like, if I'm drafting a quarterback early, I want to be sure that he's a winner. He's Obviously, a winner. there are other things you got to factor in, uh, the intangibles, the arm, everything. And you guys hit it. From what I heard, you guys hit it on the money. But dude's a winner. That means <laughs> something. That means something. It does. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Shout out what? to Denver Blair. He said, why does Broder look like a child? I do look small right here. <laughs> here stand get, that, up. get that C light up. There we go. Yeah, you might just want well, to stand. In, in the middle, you can scan the QR code for jacklabrador.gg. No, I, I missed the first half, but I know Sam covered all the stuff that I would defend J.J. McCarthy with, probably with a little more data to back it up. So, yeah. yep. I'm yeah. in. Yo, did you hear his play-by-play, his budding play-by-play <laughs> career? No. It was amazing, man. I, I mean, mean I, I, I was sitting here like, yo. Up. I did my best. You know, you know, just uh, just uh, reliving some of the plays that gave me so much joy this year. I mean, when it comes to Michigan football, I am locked the F in every single week. <laughs> love it. Let's I love it. go. Let's go, By man. the way, we're going to hold off one more segment before we talk to Wendell. So we're going to play Triple Threat with KG. Let's go. I believe next. Um, yes, and then sir. we'll get into our convo with the man. I love Wendell segments, Brown Sr. I love these segments. Yeah. I really do. It's From the big mock to triple threat, man. Let's get it. But first, we got to hear where I told you guys earlier where I take my uh, pet lion, man. It is Premier Pet Supply. Give your pet the best at Premier Pet Supply. It's hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers with one major difference. They are family and locally owned for over 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food and nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside and home delivery. Premier Pet Supply. Give your pet the best at www.premierpetsupply.com Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. 
featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you should see what I did there. Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Football season is officially over and spring training is right around the corner. However, Jack Labrador is 24-7, 365 days a year. Learn how to play now on your phone at jacklabrador.gg. Two new symbols and a franchise changing three-point play. And remember that once you go Jack, you never go back. Go to jacklabrador.gg. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward Chat family. Thank you guys for kicking off the day. Look at that beautiful board. Gotta get our so sponsors crispy love. chicken and pizza. I see you on your Vanna White right now. Yeah, hey, gotta show it off. I know I'm gonna be blocking <laughs> a little bit. Let's go. And Sorokis is absolutely fire. I remember when we began to do these ad reads and everybody was putting the fire emojis in the chat. It's fire. It's fire. Definitely. But I know we gotta kick things off with triple threat. Brought to us by Mr. KG, Detroit's number one draft pick. Yes, Ready sir. for the second, man. I love this. Is this is this triple threat number two for you now? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, Let's do go. it. This Let's one is, is pretty modest today, if I must say so myself. But we're going to do it anyway. So the name of the game is Triple Threat. Y'all know what it is. I'm going to give you six questions, and you'll have to answer in three words. And then if you want to give a short explanation as to why, you can do that. For example, one thing you got to look out for in the morning is Broder's uh, penis jokes. <laughs> so, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Are we ready, gentlemen? Are we ready? This yes. is the morning wood show. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get some music popping. Uh, the first question. Something of a fallacy. <laughs> Are the Lions done signing free agents? In three words or less. Are the Lions done signing free agents? Uh, don't think so. Okay. That's kind of where I was headed. Definitely not done. They're still going to add some pieces. There was my three words. They're still going to add a few pieces. No superstar, but they're going to, they got to add a little bit of depth at different positions in preparation for the NFL draft. So definitely not done. Possibly a corner. Steven Nelson Ooh. and Stephon Gilmore are still out there. Okay. I like, I like that. that. I like that. Not a chance. They are not done yet at all. Not a chance. Uh, Wendell, do you have? A three word answer. Oh, you in? You, let's, let's play. Three words. Absolutely words. not. <laughs> <laughs> Two words. Cool. Yeah, that works with me. That works with me. Uh, do we have any in the chat? Oh, let me watch. Let me look here. Mike G may acquire corner. Steve DeYoung, Holmes has time. Xavier D, Gilmore will arrive. Shod with a very compelling answer. I don't know. Very on brand. For <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so mine would be uh, one more signing. Uh, I believe it's either going to be a corner or an edge rusher. I assume corner, like, to Sam Flannel's point. So uh, question number two. This is a Red Wings question. How much blame does Derek Lalonde get if the Red Wings don't make the playoffs? In three words. I got you. I'll go with most of it. Okay. I, you know what? I was going to say half of it. Half of it. Yes. Mm. All right. Yes. I think they the, got the, the players. Defense. They got the players. I, I feel like that defense, man, if, if Stevie Y could have did a little bit more to shore that thing up. I don't know if they have the talent yet. Okay. I'm interested to see your answer. Yeah. I would say a proportionate amount. Okay. The reality is, is that what a word. one injury, especially when you have the depth that the Red Wings do, especially when it comes to the offensive side, you're, it's not supposed to completely derail a season. And the Red Wings, whether you like it or not, are in the middle of a collapse. They could write it, but when you collapse, that's got to fall some on coaching. Yeah. It just does. JB. I'm going to go with half of it. Just because they have the talent there, they have the players, just something is not clicking. I don't know whether it's coaching or that stupid patch, but either or, something's not there. <laughs> I feel you. Uh, do we have any chat answers? Uh, John Henry says half of it. We got Steve DeYoung, bad jersey logo, assuming the priority patch. Is the uh, reason. LFGRW baby cakes from Patrick Ofiara. <laughs> Mostly all blame. Mostly from the real all. K. Collins 77. Damn, I didn't think we'd get a yeah. mostly all. Well, I don't um, think he's on the hot seat, but I think he deserves, like, 
they're not playing well. Like yeah. they got, they're all on the ice now. They're just not playing well. I would say sixty percent blame. Uh, sixty percent blame. Yeah, I think that's three words. But yeah. anyway, yeah, sixty yeah, percent blame. Um, <laughs> I mean, Stevie Y, he did put this roster together, and he will be knocked for not doing any, anything at the trade deadline. I think that's pretty obvious if they don't make the playoffs. But you know, I. The no fight and, and just the way they go out there. And like you said, Dylan Larkin going down one player, they shouldn't be this bad, you know. So I do think that falls on coaching more so than Stevie Wise moves. But uh, question. What about the patch? I give the patch all of it. I think it's oh. the patch. Too. <laughs> right, don't, don't. The patch brought bad juju. The patch curse. But question number three. This is going right to you, Sam. In three years' time. What do you expect to see from U of M basketball coach Dusty May? <laughs> In three words. Sweet 16 appearance. Ooh, okay. And let, let me just give a quick explanation because obviously the cupboard is going to be left bare in theory. Doug McDaniels in the portal, Terrace Reed's in the portal, Olivia Kamoa's out of eligibility. However, there are three graduate seniors with a year of eligibility left who came from FAU who might, Dusty May might want to get on the phone and see if they want to play a year at Michigan. And also, just that might make Michigan better more quickly than you think, but a reasonable three-year three year expectation after coming into a program that was completely burnt down, I would say a sweet 16 appearance. Love that. I'm going to go with Big Ten champs. Ooh, Ooh. okay. Talk about it. That, that's all I got to say. Big Ten champs. Big Ten champs. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Ooh, I was going to say... Um, I, uh, big, oh, man. Dun, 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 dun. Man, I got to fit this into three words. Yeah. I was going to say contenders. Uh, B1G title contenders. We'll do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like their logo. Okay. Oh, it encompasses contenders. the Big Ten in there, right? <laughs> there we go. Jay Bizzle. Uh, I'll go with return to tourney. I don't, I don't really know too much about this man's career and what he's been doing in the past, but I definitely think hopping over to Michigan, he does have some players over there that he's definitely going to highlight and spotlight. So definitely return to tourney. Where they land in the tourney and how far they go is all up to him. For sure. What we got in the chat, guys? We got N-I-E-L. LFG. Oh, yeah. uh, we got a lot of NILs actually. Running Big Ten says Mitten Made. Uh, uh, At er least respectable Xavier D. We got Steve DeYoung better than Howard. If oh Jesus, if, if, if Dustin Dusty May's not better than Howard, then like shut down the program. Yes, That'd be a problem. <laughs> yeah. seriously. For yeah. me, it's better recruits, please. Um, in three years, I feel like they should be able to do something in the recruiting department, whether it's transfer portal or leaning more into NIL. Ward Manuel, let this man work. Let him rebuild this program and get it back to a prominent state. So that would be me. Uh, do we have time for yeah. one more? For yes. Rick? All right. So question number four, going back to college basketball. Oh. How can Tom Izzo make a deep tournament run next year in three words? Change his philosophy or, or alter his philosophy. I don't want Tom Izzo to lose all of what Tom Izzo is. I think he's one of the best coaches in college basketball history, but you got to adapt to the times a little bit, whether that's NIL, certain coaching things. He's got to make some adjustments. As long as it's not too much new Tom Izzo, uh, we still need a little bit, a little bit of modernization. Big facts. Who's I was going, going next? I was going to say change his way, similar to what you were talking yeah, about as exactly well. that's exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> Man too. in yep. the mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From, <laughs> from the NIL to even some coaching strategies and whatnot, change his ways a little bit. All right, for next year, I would say development of sophomores. We all know that the recruiting class was one of the top ones in all of the nation, number one in the Big Ten coming into this year. But uh, Xavier Booker only played nine minutes a game. Cohen Carr, he had some flashes, but he definitely played out of position and was kind of raw. And Jeremy Fears, unfortunately, missed the last part of the season because he got shot in the leg. Maybe some of those guys just weren't ready. It seems unfeasible because the team was so, I mean, was so underperforming in front of them, but maybe they just weren't ready and they all have sophomore jumps. And this is just for next year. As far as philosophically goes, I am more in line with uh, Broder and Kool-Aid. All right, JB McCarthy, talk about your Spartans. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta say the same thing that Kool-Aid said, change your ways. If you don't adjust to the way this game is now being played and operated, everything is gonna pass you by and you're gonna be on the outside looking in 
thinking like, damn, this is what I should have done to get my team further along in the tournament, whether that's NIL money or the transfer portal. You just need to change your ways now and make it quick. Big facts. Do we got anything in the chat? Yeah, I see from Vincent Ellison, the second use transfer portal. Mm, we got like Greg Hartman, pay your players. Herb Nash, on board with Broder. How about this? Jordan Schaefer, Wendell Brown Sr., looking fly AF. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's facts. Good morning, Big Show Pick. CK, throw in the towel. <laughs> I guess he's a, not a Michigan State fan. As much as I would love that. <laughs> um, no, uh, mine <laughs> is play five stars. Listen. If you have five-star recruits, I don't care if they're freshmen. You got to get out of that old school mentality. Play your five stars. Otherwise, what are you recruiting them for? Hey, like, I, I wasn't a five-star. I understand. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But you you got to play your five. If you have them, yeah, you play. Absolutely. I'm with you. I was messing with you. All right. So we got two more here. This next one's pretty easy. It's a Tigers question. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get some pretty wild answers to this. Um, I bet it involves Javier Baez. I bet it does, too. <laughs> Question five, what do you do about El Mago in three words? I mean, uh, release that man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him go. I, I hate to say it. Actually, I don't hate to say it. He struggled. He can't hit. He's not the best fielder anymore. There's nothing you can do. You can't trade him. You got to release him and eat, eat $95 million. That's uh, four words. It feels yeah. like it is hurting your baseball soul. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> we got Ryan Kreidler down in AAA now, who's by far at least Great performed spring. better this spring. Yeah. I, you got to release him, unfortunately. Yeah, let him go. Let, let him, him go. go. Pay him off. Pay him to just uh, go away. Yep. <laughs> Legally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bad at that. You got $98 million on hand? Yeah, just to, I, I, I don't. <laughs> Chris Illich may or may not. Oh, yeah. He does. He does. <laughs> All the little Caesars around the, the effing world. Uh, JB, what are we looking like, man? Uh, release or trade? But then again, I don't know. It, does, is there any trade value for him? Can you no, get anything none. back for him? No. So, not with that yeah. number. Not I, with that I guess concert. just release. Shoot. We, we got Mike Reed in the chat says, fly away, please. The real Col K Collins <laughs> says, let him go. Not my money, says Chuck Brewer. Yeah, it's a good one. Fly, bye, bye, bye. Fly away, please. Is that what he said? <laughs> Is that what they said? Oh, yeah, Mike Green, fly away, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting Coach Broder. Hey. I'm not mad at that. Hey, yeah. let's go. Lock him out. Who is that, Lock CK? Him out. That's a good one, CK. <laughs> Stay out. Man. Who's Stay the football out, like, player? He showed up and his car wasn't working on uh, training day. <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> or in Coach Carter where they locked the gym. Like, just, oh, yeah. Just yeah. 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 locked the field. Yeah. Yeah. Keep him off the dugout, man. Um, <laughs> mine would be uh, bench his ass. Uh, <laughs> that's just my three words, man. Listen, I don't think the Tigers are going to do anything this year, much to the dismay of us all. Um, but I don't think A.J. Hinch is going to go another year and allow him to keep bringing this young lineup down. I think it'll start gradually. If by the end of April he's still doing the same shit, he goes down to eight or ninth in the lineup. If by June he's still doing the same, he I, I feel like he'll get benched. So, and that's probably the best we can hope for, or maybe some kind of finagle at the trade deadline, you know. But so I pray for, for two good months, hitting about 350 <laughs> to be able to trade him. No, that, seriously. That, that's what I was gonna ask you. Is there any no. any scenario? Do you think that this guy has anything left for the Detroit Tigers? No. <laughs> and his contract, the way it's structured, he has all the power. It's all player options. Uh, so he has Sheesh. to say, yeah, no, no, you keep your money. Like, I don't need $98 million. No chance he does that. Yeah. He's got to he's he? gotta prove that he – I mean, literally he's got to prove he can hit 400, and that's not going to happen. He's yeah. the worst everyday player in baseball. Yes. <laughs> it, it, he is. He 100% is. Yeah. Well, well, just to put it plainly, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> he's not he's speaking the facts. I, I knew where that one was going. But um, <laughs> we have last one, one more. We have one more question. Wendell, are you uh, a Lions fan at all? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Okay, all right, perfect, Dan. He can, he can chip in with this one. This one isn't a three-word response, but there's three different answers. So, Throwing question six. Wrinkle. You're the Detroit Lions. You're on the clock. Trade up, trade back, or stay put? A little uh, variation on triple threat. Yes. Mm. I, I think this is going to be unpopular. I'm going to say trade back. Ooh, okay. I feel like that 29th pick is going to be very valuable on draft night to someone early in the second round or someone trying to move up and get that five-year rookie contract, that fifth-year option for a rookie. So I think if you can move back a couple spots, it's a deep draft. 
Take yeah. it. We know what Brad Holmes can do later in the draft. Take it. Trade back. You can. Man, Who's I've, been, next? I've been kicking back between stay put or trade back. But that fifth year, especially with trying to maximize that window sometimes, it's like, yo, if your cornerback or your edge is there, you got to you gotta stay put. You gotta <laughs> it's stay a put. variable. If Brad Holmes sees his guy, yeah. you go get him. Yep. Sam. Stay put. I would say that partially because I think at 29, you could probably get – Chop Robinson or Xavier Leggett, two guys that yeah. I really like. And Xavier Leggett, mm-hmm. he's a guy that is climbing up the draft boards. If you would have asked me this a couple of weeks ago, I might have said trade back, have two picks in the second round, get Xavier Leggett, get Cooper BB, and we're all happy. That might not be possible anymore. <laughs> so to be safe, I would say stay put. JB. There's two answers right here. Man, <laughs> as a fan, trade up. But as logic will put, and as a smart GM, which is what I'm going to go with, trade back. I think there's someone in those later rounds, and brother, as you said, this is a deep draft that Brad Holmes is looking at, and honestly, he thinks he can double up probably in that second round. So trade back. Ooh, I'm seeing a lot of trade ups in the chat. I see Mike G saying trade up, chop. Hey, see uh, trade up, trade up or back. So not stay put. Trade up, homie says the real Kate Collins. Harold Wilsey. Sam only wants Michigan players, which is why I mentioned Shop Robinson, <laughs> Penn State, and Xavier Leggett, South Carolina. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it. I would love if they drafted Chris Jenkins. Ooh, yes, that would be nice. Or Roman Wilson. I wouldn't be mad at that either. Or Zinter. Yeah. 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 I'll take Blake Horn too as number three. <laughs> but we really don't need him. So all of Michigan, yeah, yeah, pr- 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 right? right. <laughs> yeah, Sandra still. Yeah. Sandra still. Don't get me started. <laughs> I take him at twenty nine. Yeah, I said it. Ooh, Wendell, really? I will. Are um, you trading up, trading back, winner. or staying put? I'll stay put. Um, I know um, Brad Holmes going to do a lot. He's still doing a lot of work in free agency right now, and um, I believe he's going to make sure we get what we need in draft. So stay put. Mm. Stay put. This is tough, but y'all, y'all already know where I'm going. Trey up, man. What, <laughs> yeah. It, it, when, you look at the, when you look at the Lions, what we don't have a lot of needs. Like, yes, we do have some needs left, but where are the real pressing needs? We don't have any. So, to me, if Brad Holmes' strategy is best player available, you take some trade capital, you move up, and you go get a stud. Um, whether that be a corner or edge, or whatever you feel – is the stud player in the first round you move up and go get him depending on how the board shakes out uh so that's what i want to see i want to see an aggressive move in the first round two quick notes sort of unrelated but on the screen we got is jj mccarthy worth the top five pick in april's draft i don't know if you guys lingered around that uh uh, in your conversation (laughs) then also and this is a conversation for a later day but i wonder if the new some of the new rules the hip drop tackle the game being more offensive or being played into uh, uh, the offensive strength. Yep. Does that change any GMs, including Brad Holmes' strategy in this draft of like, man, we do need to pr- prioritize offense when maybe we needed a pass rusher or we needed mm. you know, a defensive player. I wonder if this changes things. I've been thinking about that for maybe. 24 hours, 12 maybe. hours. That's a good question. I don't think it does, but maybe. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. Let us know. I know the game's getting softer. I know that. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So is that the last question, yeah, KG? Yes, it was. That awesome. is triple threat for the day. I appreciate you all for uh, joining us this uh, this fine morning. So yes. Hey, yeah, it's a great segment as always. Appreciate as always, it. and some good questions, man. Oh, cool. Oh yeah. yeah. Cool. Let's get to break because we got uh, Mr. Wendell Brown Sr. coming up next. I encourage you all to join us just after this break. Uh, we got an incredible story, incredible human being here in studio with us. I can't wait to introduce you. Yeah, he's sharp too, man. And oh, I can yeah. tell you got crispy, man, smooth. Yeah. I like you, man, Appreciate the lineup, the edge, Appreciate the bit, everything. I can tell you guys where you can go and kind of get done up as well, man. Oh. It's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, and relax and let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists Make you look and feel great. Walking anytime is open seven days a week. It is wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. 
every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights. Live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Diamonds, it's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. We are the network for Detroit by Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. Shake Shack and Woodward Sports want to remind you, it's always football season. How would you like to win two free tickets to this season's home opener? It's the Shake Shack QB Challenge. If you can throw it on rope, you could be at the home opener. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack location at woodwardsports.com or scan the QR code right now. There. Scan it. What up, though, people? Welcome back. It is Wake Up Woodward. And it's uh, it seems like the weather is getting a little bit better. The snow has melted. That makes my heart and my voice feel just that much better, guys. It, it does. It does. It does. I'm glad to be up here with you guys. We got a starter five today. And actually, we got a six man today who's about to tell his story. And I cannot wait. Yes. I've been looking forward to this uh, since you introduced us to his story. Uh, and now we get to be introduced to the man himself, Mr. Wendell Brown Sr. Yes, I, 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 to, to give him a fair... Oh, hey, there he is, Wendell. <laughs> um, to give him a, a fair intro. I just want everyone to uh, understand like th the power of perspective. And we were just talking about it before. There's so much that we all individually deal with in life. We have our, our struggles, the things that impact us the most. For me, hearing a story and being connected to a, a, a human like Wendell... It puts a lot into perspective for me when I'm thinking about, you know, things that I'm dealing with in life and to hear what he's yeah. going through. And this isn't to compare anyone's struggles from anyone else's or what anyone else is going through. But sometimes just hearing other people's stories, whether you can relate to it or just empathize with it or, or take it to motivate you to move forward. This is something I, a man I trained with about a decade ago, I haven't seen him since until today. Mm. But I think about him a lot when I'm going through these things of just that extra little edge you need to get through. So I, I want to introduce you a, a, a former Detroit star athlete in there high we school. Go. So let's say Detroit native. An huh? author, a leader, a mentor. Uh, we're going to get into a story. So we'll, we'll, we'll give you all the other titles. But this Wendell Brown Sr. Wendell, Yo, how you doing this morning? Bless, hey, bless. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It's, a, it's an honor and a blessing to be here. I'm definitely grateful. Yeah, we're, we're so grateful to have you here. Um, I, I teased your story a little bit, at least the, you know, the headline. The headline when you were, you were in China, you were wrongly imprisoned, wrongfully detained. Um, we're going to get into that story. That was for almost three years. But you've been a, a part of this Detroit sports community since you were a kid. Yes. Uh, up until starring at Detroit King, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. High School, mm -hmm. uh, where you were a star linebacker. Just talk to me uh, while we get to know you. What was that like? What was your experience growing up in Detroit, being a star football player? Um, I know you had a good relationship with your mom and your uncle. Where, where do you want to start with your story? Um, just, you know, being, being from the city of Detroit, you know, um, from a rugged, hard-nosed place, but also one that's full of love and full of positivity as well. You know, um, I wouldn't be the person I am today had it not been uh, from my community, um, from my mentors and the people um, within the city of Detroit who poured into me. So just uh, growing up being one of the top athletes in the state of Michigan, 
um, earning a full football scholarship to Ball State University, um, where I'm now in their Hall of Fame, their Sports Hall of Fame, um, and just had a great experience, you know, and able to give back and um, help lead others down the same path that I went down. Yeah. So, so you ended up at Ball State. You said you got a full scholarship, which, uh, from reading your book, uh, was a big moment for you and your family. When you got there, though, Ball State wasn't the best team uh, in the conference. There was some rebuilding to be done, and you were part of a transformation yeah, with that good. football team, a leader as a freshman. Yes, 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 a true freshman starter um, mm -hmm. and also uh, a vocal leader from the moment I stepped foot on campus. Um, but that also comes from just my work ethic and the preparations that I put in on a daily basis, you know, especially as being a young guy, you know, being a freshman, um, rarely do freshmen – at the collegiate level, get an opportunity to have a voice. Right. You know, so you have to actually be um, a player and a leader in order to um, be considered listen, to listen to, you know. Um, so just to have that and to be at work towards that and to be able to build with Ball State University and um, do some of the things that we accomplished there as a, as a university, going undefeated one season, uh, going back-to-back -back bowl games, and just – you know, a, a lot of growth. You know, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, improvement in the growth in the graduation rate as well. Just mm. other things outside of just athletics, you know. Yeah. So, so among, amidst this turnaround, uh, you were part of it for, for several years. You end up getting hurt your senior year. Yes. A torn pectoral muscle. Yes. Uh, yes. What we witnessed uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson this season with the Lions, mm. a torn pectoral muscle that took you out of that that senior year. Yeah. And I know there were some other things going on, but that was the first time you had a, a serious injury in your life. Um, and if I remember correctly from the book, you know, however that season ended, your last experience with that team, you, you had your, your equipment stuffed in a garbage bag. It was kind of like your, your own exit meeting. Yeah. It couldn't have felt good, but uh, what, where was your mindset at that time in terms of still whether chasing a professional football career or, or you had to come back to Detroit at that point? Yeah, um, you know, things, things changed fast. You know, I'd never been without football in my life. You know, so to have an injury um, to sit me out and then things lead to um, myself still being sidelined, um, it was tough. You know, it, it was extremely tough, uh, especially as a, as a young man. I'm still um, not legal drinking age yet. You know, I'm still a kid in a sense and to have the thing that I identified most with you know as a young man I I pretty much said I, I, I'm a football player mm -hmm. you know as a young kid my name is Wendell Brown and I identify as an athlete you know and it, it isn't until we get older as men and women in the world till we get to understand exactly what our purpose is and what we are to do with our life yeah, and you had become a father, too. Yeah. I meant to say that before you graduated yeah, or before still, you left Ball State, you became a father. So your decisions of what to do changed drastically. You came back and you were looking for – you had to find odd jobs around Detroit. Yeah, I had to figure out how I was going to provide for my son now. You know, um, my NFL dreams um, had been put on hold. You know, so I had to figure out exactly what I was going to do to ensure Wendell Lee Brown Jr., was going to be taken care of he's going to be provided for and he was going to have the best um of resources the best of opportunities and i was going to put him in the best situation possible hey man he's sharp in some of these pictures too i see man you got <laughs> him just nice and so this is after this is more recent pictures you now uh you you coach at at king now and we're, we're going to get to that but yeah. from from your my experience this is after ball state uh and, and i want to I want to get your, your thought. You, you chased arena football career and, and uh, CFL. You were trying to just put film on tape. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we met when you were training up at Barwis Methods. Yeah. But there was one quick story I want to, I want to ask you about. Um, I believe you were, you were coaching at Adrian at the time, or you may have been downtown, but you ran into a homeless woman. Mm -hmm. And she said something to you. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did, can you tell this story? Are you, are um, you able to? Yeah. That, that uh, moment? That I'll never forget this moment because um, it's to be able, like, I always wanted to help. You know, I'm always thinking about how I can help others. And I, I witnessed a young lady pushing the cart. You know, she was an older woman um, and she was pushing the cart, a, a buggy full of things, you know, and um, just wanting to help, wanting to be a help me any way I possibly can. I asked her if she needed anything. You know, I asked her if she needed anything and, and if she was okay. And, and, and her response was basically um, for me to expect a miracle. 
you know, and um, and through our interaction, you know, she never she never asked like she never wanted anything from me, but basically wanted to make sure I was OK in that moment, you know, and and once once we parted ways, like I, I knew in my heart that I was speaking to to an angel. I was speaking to someone who also had the same purpose in life as me, like to help and to help and aid others, you know, to make people feel good. Because even though she was going through a tough time and she's pushing the cart and she's looking as if she needs the help, she in return offered herself to me to help me. And that was a, a blessing. And I'll never forget it. I'm always thankful for her. Yes, uh, absolutely. That's a that, that, that's a that's an amazing story. I have to ask you this question as a uh, Michigan fan, because the name Brady Hoke is somebody that uh, you know gives us Michigan fans some mixed emotions. But you played for him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what what was it like having him as a head coach in college? Oh, Brady Hoke was amazing. He, he's he's an amazing man, an amazing leader, an amazing father. Um, I didn't just get a chance to have a, and develop a personal relationship with him, but also his family, his wife and his children, you know, and that's the kind of person he was. He, he showed me a lot outside of just sports. He was the first person to show me how to watch film, how to break it down and how to prepare myself so that um, the game would slow down for me. The game would be easier for me. And I was able to make a lot, play, a lot more plays um, just from his leadership, his guidance and and also with uh, preparing for manhood, um, showing me how to be accountable, um, how to be responsible, how to take care of my son and prepare myself and my son to be great. And um, I'm forever grateful and forever thankful for the relationship that we developed, um, for um, the guidance that, that he offered me and um, just the love and care from me being a 17 year old kid leaving home um, and, and to his care as a, as a man and as a leader. And you know, as parents, that's what that's what parents are doing. You know, they are sending their child off um, to be with someone else and it, in hopes that they will be safe, that they will be taken care of. You know, and I was. And this is a, a blessing. I grew up a lot at Ball State University, and I'm extremely thankful for Beatty Hope. Yeah. That, that probably kept you going as, as you, you had moved into uh, fatherhood back in Detroit. And, and all the, you're trying to figure out how you balance raising Junior, being the man of the house, uh, providing for him now, also chasing the NFL dream. So, you 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 got an opportunity on. I believe it was more than one arena football team, but mm -hmm. also then the Canadian Football League with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Mm -hmm. And th this is a part of the part of that journey that hit me the most. You, you're named a captain yeah. as a a. Are you, you're still trying Ricky. out. You, yeah, it's a second preseason game. You're named yeah. a captain, uh, but then a bunch of stuff happened. What was that like? Tell me about that, that time. A huge mix of emotions in a f short amount of time, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I felt like I was strapping my jetpack on. You know, I, I felt like I was headed to where I wanted to be, you know, and um, I was one step closer to that goal, you know, and then it all um, – and then it, I had, I took some steps back in the instant. So this is plantar, plantar fasciitis. Like yes. you were trying to get a contract. Yeah. You, you were starring in the first two preseason season games, named a captain in that second game. And then you learn, you got to be out for three to six weeks with mm -hmm. plantar fasciitis. Um, you go back to rehab. The team wants you back, but then the front office staff, all the coaches, they get fired. Yeah. And that opportunity kind of goes away. Tough. Yeah. That was, that was extremely tough. Um, but I was left with a decision after that, uh, continue to pursue um, the Canadian Football League or my main goal, which is which was the NFL. You know, so um, I, I figured that I had enough film to take the next step. Like I had two two starts. I led the team in all defensive categories in those two games. Um, and I, I felt like I produced enough film to show that athletically I'm gifted enough to be able to um, compete at the highest level. I have a I have a, a football question because uh, that's the route going to Canada and playing in the Canadian Football League. That's the route that a lot of uh, you know American college football players take if they're not able to make the NFL straight afterwards. What was it like adjusting to the different rules of that game? Was it an easy adjustment or was it difficult? I mean, you obviously thrived when you first got there. I mean, football is football. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's 
tackle as far as speed yeah, as yeah. being the defender. It's yeah, tackle yeah. the guy with the ball. Sure. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it doesn't get any easier for me. Like, as far as offensive-wise, go with the receivers coming in high motion and um, defenders uh, being one yard off the ball as far as, you know, um, how as far as alignment goes. And – but – you know, it's a couple of rules that, that differ, but ultimately, football is football, no matter how the arena, whether it's inside or outside. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, as a fellow parent, it's awesome to be able to hear your story about how your child um, kind of factored into your drive. Can you speak to that? Because as athletes, you know, a lot of us have played sports in some capacities. I know Broder at, at Michigan, I play college ball, basketball. How much, and we push as hard as we can to try and achieve. But how much more did your son, and knowing what you wanted to be able to provide for him, how much more did that energize your push to get to the top? 1,000%. 1,000%. Um, I, I thought I knew what it felt like to want something so bad. And then when um, my son was born, it, it made me desire it more because it wasn't just for myself anymore. It was for him. It was for um, the rest of my family. Um, so just to... And even now, you know, even now with my baby, and he's he's 17 and just turned 17, and preparing for college gradu uh, for high school graduation, and um, to go off to college, got a full uh, athletic scholarship to Siena Heights, and just he's everything. Congrats that, to that! Thank you, thank you so much, full bro. Full scholarship to Siena it, Heights. Yeah, amazing. yeah, it's an amazing because he worked so hard for it. You know, um, a lot of times by him being so young, and I'm trying to instill the tools he need um, to be successful within the household that's going to drive him outside of there, whether it be hard work, whether it be discipline, whether it be time management, you know, whether it be um, just being able to understand your surroundings and being socially aware of where you are and who you're around. You know, so things that are going to be essential to his success, regardless of if he plays a sport or not, you know? Yep, and, and knowing like where your son is headed now, knowing where he's at, uh, you know, loving who he's become. Is there anything a part of your journey which probably contributed to where he's at now that you would have changed? Um, I mean, once a lot of times I thought about just the the time that he spent alone without me. You know, mm -hmm. um, that time yeah. where I could only pray that God protect him because I couldn't do it physically. Jesus. You know, and I battle with that. I battle with my baby being by himself. You know, and I vow to never allow him to be on himself again, uh, be by himself again, you know, and even with right now and he I'm sure he's I upset him almost every day because um, I won't allow him to underachieve. Mm -hmm. You know, he has so much greatness within him. And, you know, even at times he's still learning it and he still have to look himself in the eyes every morning when he brushes teeth and and speak to himself and let him let himself know that he's great because i'm going to tell him every day but it has to get to the point where he tells himself as well you know and and, and that's what i'm pushing and that's what i'm aiming for and i know that's he's, he's doing it he's headed there and he, he's doing it now so i'm excited i'm proud of my baby yeah you, you talk about that time uh having to be separated his time alone that didn't start when you were when you were jailed that started when you started taking these opportunities overseas uh, pursuing your career um, and before we get to our first break uh, I, I would like to know a little bit more what led you to China what led you to Shang Quinn did I pronounce uh, that right? Chongqing 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 China yes yeah. it's, it's actually the uh, sister city of Detroit no way yeah wow yep so um yeah actually what led me to Asia was my experience in Europe like uh, I had just come from Europe um, playing and coaching over there. Um, I enjoyed myself and um, was offered an opportunity um, to do the same over in Asia. Yeah. So that's where you first started having to learn uh, to live, live separately and communicate separately. And, and that communication or lack thereof further on in this story is something I want to ask you about. Um, because there was a, a, a one, one fateful night in China that sort of changed the trajectory of things. Um, and actually, I don't even want to put words in your mouth. I want to hear it from you, what this all meant. Um, we'll do that right when we come back from, from this break. You guys yeah. take this. Yeah, definitely. That's good news that we get another segment with, uh, oh, yeah. with this legend doing. right here, Mr. Wendell Brown Sr. Uh, I wanted people to get to know like a little bit about him as a human, as a father. Like, what took him over to China? There's so much like 
story before. We haven't even scratched yeah. the surface. Yeah. Um, but what led to all this, and uh, I know what all factored into his his drive and sanity to get out of the situation you were you yes, were putting. Yes, sir. That's some good news. I do got a little bit of bad news, and there's some more good news to tell you guys about. The bad news is insurance rates are going up in the state of Michigan. And for a lot of people, they already have. Surprise. But the good news is Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, it's it's right now more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss Insurance will make sure that your current carrier is not slipping in extra fees or raising your deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit INS.com and tell them that Woodward Sports sent you. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. First paved road in America. Woodward Sports. The first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. Hey, you guys. I know you're tired of wearing that same old Detroit sports merch. Hell yeah, Well, it is a new era in sports wearables with amazing designs, the ultimate apparel, the ultimate swag. Check out WoodwardSports.com. Click on that shop tab. We're dropping new merch every single week. We got the Brad Holmes Guy t-shirt. We just released the LFG Red Wing shirt. We also got it on hoodies as well, too. And we also got the Woodward Lions as well. Check out WoodwardSports.com. Click on that merch tab. Get swagged out because you know the draft is coming. Hey, welcome back. It is Wake Up what Woodward. Up, what up, dope people, man? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We got the whole starting five. Squad. And really, probably the sharpest man to have ever walked into this studio. Damn, Mr. Right. Wendell Brown Sr. And this story is amazing. And I know we're uh, kind of halfway through it right now. And you know what? It's also 326 day. Fight night at the Joe. Darren McCarty. I see he just walked into the I building as well. Yeah. Got to celebrate him a little bit more. We it's do. Gonna be cool, but first. But first, but shout out to the chat. Thank you guys for Definitely. being here, for supporting us, for supporting Wendell. Uh, if you could hit that like button, it would really help us out. But we got to get back into this story. Uh, when Wendell, when you made it to Ching Chong, Ching Chong, Chong Ching, Chong Ching, yeah. uh, you went out as a player, but you soon learned their uh, knowledge of playing American football wasn't what you expected. You were getting yourself into. And I don't know if that was the moment you became more of a, a coach and an advocate of the game, but you were helping kids and traveling all around Asia at this point in time. Uh, what was that like? Um, I mean, it, it was great. It's the same thing that I've been doing my whole life. Like I did it all through Europe, done it all over uh, North America, um, just growing the game of American football, but also spreading love, yeah. you know, um, showing people that you love and care for them, you know, and that's really what it's about. You know, just um, showing people a good time and, and allowing your heart, allowing people to feel your heart, you know, and and that's that's really what my travels around the world have been. You know, just uh, being a help meet, um, being someone who um, can spread love no matter what it may look like or matter, no matter what people have felt previously. No, so yeah. so uh, you don't think of football in Asia like, like when you think of Asia you don't think football so uh, you were probably teaching the game to people who had a very like not even baseline knowledge of the game how did those how did the uh, how did the uh, people of Asia like take to the game of football I think they took to it very well um, I mean while there I, I um, hosted multiple football camps uh, football clinics coaching clinics 
um, just and and not just for the sport of American football, but also basketball. Coach some basketball while I was there, and baseball as well. Um, just our great pastimes, our American sports. You know the the sports that we love, the things that us as growing up as young people kept us out of trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, giving those young people another outlet to um, have fun and to reach other young people, you know, to build relationships, to build camaraderie, um, to learn how to work well with others on a common goal, um, to learn that everyone has a purpose and a part and a piece within um, an organization or a team or a business or, and, and these are, these are tools that are essential to one success. These are tools that, you know, myself and some of you guys have learned throughout, um, early your early years in life because if you had the opportunity to play team sports you know and going over to asia i noticed that a lot of people hadn't had that yeah you see your your attitude about all that and we showed the pictures you're i I don't know if i've ever seen you not smiling (laughs) which is why this next part of your your journey was so crazy to me can you tell us anything you're willing to about uh the night you were just going out to celebrate uh, a night out with some friends. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, then, and then something happened. Yeah, um, I was attacked by multiple men within a bar. Mm-hmm. You know, um, minding your own business. Minding my own business, relaxing, and and um, I really didn't think too much of it. You know, um, it wasn't even a bar fight. It was, you know, me defending myself, stopping guys from hurting me, and walking away. You know, and for, you know, that to totally alter the trajectory of my life um it was shocking and not just shocking to myself but like you said shocking to you shocking to my family my friends everyone who who loves and supports me you know and um and in in an instant you know our our lives can be turned upside down yeah so it it started with those two guys but then before you know it you're surrounded by 30 men police officers you don't speak their language. You don't understand them. There's a language barrier. Um, eventually, and feel free to cut me off if, if, I'm, if I'm sharing the wrong information, but you're in, you're in the back of a cop car not knowing what's going on, having no idea why you're the one being detained. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and that was it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm in the back of a cop car. Um, the police officers are having their way with me, and, you know, clubs to the head mm. and, and everywhere else they could find space and just... Yeah. I didn't know what was next, you know, um, to be in that space, to be away from everybody who even speaks English, let alone looks like me, you know, to, to be away from any familiar f- or even loving, smiling face, you know, and to not know what's next. And that is how I would live the next three years of my life. That's the thing, just not knowing what's next. Not knowing what's next. That's when I was reading your book. That was what I, I couldn't believe. The amount of times you kept meeting with lawyers. So, you, so you're in prison now. You're, 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 um, you're, you're in the, uh, the Chongqing prison, and you got lawyers that you don't understand. They're asking you or trying to force you to, to plead guilty. And you're like, no, I didn't do anything. This stretched over years. Yeah, well, yeah. What are you willing to share about your time in this prison and trying to figure out how to get out? Lack of communication. Um, basically, just, um, I mean, I was on my own. You know, I was on my own, even with my representation. Uh, I went through multiple lawyers, you know, um, and to have someone to truly, to truly defend me, you know, and to be wrongfully in prison, to have all the evidence in my favor, and yet still have those who are to speak for me um, force me and try to corner me into saying something that was totally false. You know, so uh, just to be on the other side of that, to think about being alone, myself and my family being alone in that state, you know, and not knowing who to trust or even who to call or, or what to do, it's a terrible feeling. And I never want anyone else to have that feeling. I never want anyone else to have to go through that and be on an island by themselves. You know, so yeah. um, in return, we've actually started an organization, the I Hope Project, to help people um, so they won't feel alone on that island. My family, my family, myself have. We're definitely going to ask you about that in just a couple minutes. KG, I know you had something to ask Wendell. Yeah, so, I mean, being reprimanded abroad is actually like a great fear of mine. That's something that I wouldn't wish on anybody. So I can imagine the experience you went through 
um we've seen examples of, of people get you know locked up abroad like the britney griner situation even here locally the paul whalen and danny fenster uh situations of of the past couple years um what what do you do when you're in a situation like that like in a, your day-to-day -day, how do you keep your your spirits up and positive when you're going through such a negative time and in such a, a negative space um one thing that my uncle told me uh early is that it all starts with us it all starts within us mm -hmm. you know and more importantly just finding finding that that place of solitude that place of peace within ourselves within our mind because if we don't have it within us it's definitely not going to happen outside of us mm -hmm. you know and um just reaffirming myself that god didn't bring me there to leave me there you know that i have to understand that i'm i'm not i haven't done anything to deserve to be in that position but other people will not have to suffer as I have solely because I'm suffering right now, you know, and mm -hmm. just understanding that it's bigger than me. It's bigger than what's happening right now. Um, it's so much bigger than just Wendell Brown being wrongfully in prison. Like there's so many other people who are swept under the rug. There's so many other people who don't have um, the, the following or haven't been over the, around the world doing things for other people so that in return they can feel like okay let me do something for him now let me just call who can i call to check on him who can i send a letter to you know and it was many days where though i was alone physically you know i would read letters and you know and and have dreams or you know think of memories that made me feel like i was not alone you know and god yeah. ensured that i always kept those feelings in my heart and in my mind so that i would never feel alone that's that's what I was going to ask you is where do you get the resolve? What is the foundation of the spirit that you've had, not just during the situation, but even after it? Uh, you you don't seem like a person who's gone through what you've gone through. It's God, brother. It's, it's God. It's all God. Amen. I can't I can't sit here and act like I've done anything other than just receive what God has given. And that's and that's literally all I've done and, and been thankful to have the ability to receive it and the open mind and the spirit to know that it's a blessing, to know that um, it's favor, to know that it's covering and to know that um, we have the power to connect with God. And in return, this is what we are to do. We are to help each other. We are to love each other. We are to um, even if it's just kind words, even if it's just a smile, it doesn't take much to truly help someone. It's true. You, you never know what someone's going to. And, and so before we get to our last break, and if you have five more minutes, I want to ask you about what you're doing now back in Detroit yeah. um, after this break. But um, before you were released and it ended up being three years, yes. you were in prison. Yes. Uh, they were trying to convince you to plead guilty. Yes. And you corrected me when I was talking to you uh, yesterday or this weekend uh, when I said that you did plead guilty. You didn't. No, you no. You didn't. They, no. they found. Explain this for me before I butcher so, the words. Um, they were trying to force me. They were trying to force me to enter a, a, a plea of guilt, and they were trying to force me for over two years. And I stood firm in my innocence. Um, I stood firm uh, in my belief that uh, my innocence will prevail. And uh, I was giving a verdict of four years. And once I received um, my four-year verdict, I was given the opportunity to appeal and I started the appeal process that same day. Wow. And then yeah. when the three years went by, did they let you go or did they release you for good behavior? How did that sentence, you had already served two years and then it was one more year? Yeah, so um, once, once I got my, once I appealed uh, my verdict, um, I was giving a three-year verdict. And after I was given a three-year verdict, I served the remaining months and was deported got you got you so ultimately and that's the last question before a break you get released you, yes, you're headed home yes sir what was that feeling like hitting <clears throat> u.s soil uh seeing your mom going down the escalator oh, in the airport God, seeing your mom man. your family there uh ready to hug them yes uh the most amazing feeling ever you know um i i've dreamed of it you know many nights i laid there and and dream to be able to hug my mother and my son and you know my my friends and and just to be back engulfed in their love and their care um 
and it was many nights we didn't know if we would be able to receive that you know but just to be there and to just that over that overwhelmingly it's right now i, I still feel it i still i still I feel, feel my heart swelling man it it's, it's i'll never forget it i'll never forget seeing my mother smile for the first time i'll never forget hearing the cheers of my family members as the uh as the doors open for me to come through and um just seeing all of the the news cameras and seeing all the lights and just seeing people waiting for me to be released you know and and i knew i knew that i had not been alone and i knew that uh god will make sure i'll never be alone again yeah yeah mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that you guys come on back after break we have the final part uh to wendell's story coming up uh would you take Love us to break kool-aid or flannel yes first we gotta tell you about big boy seafood fest is back at big boy catch it while you can dive into fish and chips their new parmesan crusted cod perfectly fried clam strip platter or a delicious fish sandwich a big boy must try the new mango iced tea the ultimate compliment to their popcorn shrimp shrimp alfredo or shrimp stir fry every day is a fish fry at big boy and don't forget every friday night the all you can eat seafood buffet see you at big boy fish and chips Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod. Perfectly fried clam shrimp platter or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango I see the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. Love Woodward Sports? Love wearing clothes? Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids, all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you. Catch Woodward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet of Novi every other Monday. Welcome back. Welcome to wake back. up Woodward. What up though, people? Thank you guys for joining us today. This has been an amazing story to be able to hear mm -hmm. uh, from Mr. Wendell Brown Sr. And I'm looking forward to even this next segment, man. My pops, he's from Detroit, went to Cass Tech, was an athlete as well, went to U of M. And the first thing he wanted to do was be able to give back to the city and be able to help people that had similar stories to his. So I'm really excited for this next yeah. uh, segment. And, and that seems like your inspiration around this book. Yes. Uh, around sharing your story and we've talked about this uh our, our audience this has been about what 26 minutes of this conversation there is so much more detail in this book about everything you went to went through um we've just scratched the surface so i encourage you to go buy it uh we'll, we'll plug this at the end but what what was your drive when you come back what's your mission now that you're in detroit you're doing so much but it all seems like kool-aid just said with the, the thought of giving back, with the yes. thought of inspiring others, keeping others positive. Tell us about it. Um, I mean, everything we experience isn't for us, but for others. You know, everything we go through is to help people go through, um, help people not just achieve their goals, but endure their tough times, um, know how to um, know how to win, teach people how to win and be a mentor, be a help me. You know, so that's what I'm doing now uh, with I've started multiple organizations. Um, my first is the Be Elevated Youth Foundation. Um, it's a youth and community empowerment organization. 
So we deal with literacy, mentorship, social and emotional learning, and helping our young people get college scholarship opportunities. Um, every year we hold a summer program, a 10-week summer program, um, and we range anywhere between 28 and 35 young people within the program every year. And within the two years that we've run the program, we've only had one young person not improve their literacy rate. Wow. You know, so um, we have weekly um, leadership speakers from um, politicians to real estate moguls to authors and, of course, professional athletes because we're always surrounded by those guys. Um, but just allowing our young people to see different avenues of success. Yeah. Mm. Um, not allowing them to see, I, I can only make it this one way, but I want to give you a hundred different avenues of success. And I want to also um, give you the resources for you to be able to reach those avenues of success. No, so that's and that's just one organization that my family and I have created um, to help young people, but also um, the I Hope Project, yeah. you know, where we help people who've been imprisoned overseas and their families navigate through the criminal and court process. Mm. Um, like I said earlier, my family and I were on the island by ourselves. We didn't know who to turn to, um, who to call, which way to go, you know, and we in, like just vowed to never allow anyone else to experience that if we can have that power to you know if we can um stop someone suffering f just one day earlier you know um it's definitely a blessing yeah. you know so um those are the two organizations that we started also my training service um train a lot of high school collegiate and professional athletes right now um also have my motivational speaking as well um, my book my brand I, I didn't wear any of my merch but i got some for you guys as well <laughs> yeah I, I definitely got some be powerful merch for you guys yeah. so um you. next time i see you i'll make sure i have some for, for, yes. for, the, for the starting lineup <laughs> for the starting five <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. speaking know. of the starting five though you're also a coach back at martin luther king high School. yes yes and I, they're they've been number one ranked in the state since you've been strength and conditioning coach and linebackers coach yes and coach and junior yes yes Yes, yeah, so um, definitely do a lot of coaching, um, and not just with Martin Luther King, but also with Salman Salmati Football Academy. Mm -hmm. um, I am also a program director there. I also coach with Michigan Elite Football Academy. You know, so just doing a lot of things. My football background, and it's so easy for me to get out there on the field and to be able to impact the young people that way. You know, they see me in my cleats, they see me in my cutoff. Okay, they they look at me and can tell that I've done it. You know, and so. Um, they gravitate towards me. So every time they do, I want to ensure I'm giving them things that are going to last well beyond their cleats. Yeah. You know, once they take their cleats off, I want them to be able to take in what they heard from me and what they received from me and be able to apply it to their everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. So I just have one more question. I want to ask the crew. You guys got any more questions for, yeah. for Wendell KG? Let yeah, it fly. I do uh, have a question. What would be your message to, to anybody going through a similar situation, not just abroad, but anybody that's wrongfully incarcerated, that's going through a situation? Now that you've made it out and you're on the other side of that, what would be your message to somebody going through a similar situation? My message would be to never give up and not just not just going through a situation would be wrongfully in prison, but anyone who's striving for something or striving to be in a better place than where they currently are, you know, never give up, you know, because your miracle can be on the other side. Your miracle could be tomorrow morning when you wake up, you know, but if you give up pretty much, if you give up the day before, you will never get there. You know, uh, I think it was Steve Harvey who has said, um, you know, why would you stop in the middle of the fire? Mm hmm. You know, why, why would you stop in the middle of the fire when you know there's no end into that pain if you stop? Yeah. But if you keep going, that pain is going to end. Mm. What about the quote? What does this quote mean to you? You going to box or you going to boogaloo? Oh, it means everything, man. That's one of the quotes um, uh, from my uncle, uh, my uncle Raymond Brown Jr., who uh, was my father figure, uh, my positive male role model. Um, the man who I wanted to emulate with everything they did from starting organizations to help people um, and to just being a leader within our community. Um, that, that statement means so much because we're often given the opportunity to live or die. Mm -hmm. You know, and every day we're given that opportunity, you know, and 
he let me know every day you're going it's, it's going to be things that you go through it's going to be hardships it's going to be tough times that comes with life it comes with it you're never going you're never going to to not have an incident to where it could go left or right so what do you do what do you do and that box of boogaloo means either you're going to fight back or you're going to dance around the problem mm -hmm. yeah. Get on or lay down. Mm. What you gonna do? You gonna fight back or you gonna dance around it? Yep. Because you have to get to the other side of it. I like that, man. A little bit of chin music. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So I they I got to know I, I see that quote recurring in your book, NFL the prison cell, which you've been working on for a while. You released it about a year ago. Um or actually actually uh it just published just on my four year anniversary. Um, September 24th, 2023 was the release. Yes, sir. And that's the four-year anniversary of me um, being released from wrongful imprisonment in China. Yeah. yeah I'd encourage everyone to pick it up. Is WendellBrownSenior.com yes, the best place to pick it up? Yes, sir. WendellBrownSenior.com. Awesome. Awesome. And I'd be – oh, there we go. JB's got it, got it up on the screen. Um, Thank you. Last, last thing, I, I know just because of how important – she was to you before we uh, we let you go. We bring DMAC in here. Your mom, Antoinette Brown. Yes. She's she's been a a constant. Oh yeah. Obviously a constant person in your life, but she's a, a huge part. What do you have to say to her? Her impact throughout this process. Um, and that's underselling it. That question. I don't even know how right, to ask right, that question. Right. Because I mean, love. The word love will never be able to express fully how I feel about this lady. You know, um, everything that I am and everything is because of her, what she's poured into me, the people who she's put around me to ensure that I'll be successful, um, the nourishment that she continues um, and the love she continues to show, not just myself, but my son and, and even just people. She's still giving back to the community, still um, donating to, to youth leagues and still just doing amazing work. And um and with our organization that we started to help people be from um, to get home from being imprisoned overseas, just um, that being her idea, you know, that being her desire to not wanting another mother or father to feel the way she felt, yeah. you know, and um, her strength man, her strength and her love, who she is. And every day I'm in awe of her. And I'm so thankful and so grateful that God would bless me with such an amazing mother. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Wendell, thank you so time. much. Thank, thank you, man. Yes. Appreciate it. What an incredible you. story. Thank We're you. so lucky incredible to have story. you here. Thank you. Hear your story. Everyone, WendellBrownSenior.com is the best place to check out his book and everything that Wendell is doing. Um, I know this is just the beginning for you. We appreciate your yeah. story. I don't know if you guys had anything to say on the way out of hey, this segment. We got DMAT coming you, in. Yeah, I'm just glad you were able to share your story here. It was awesome to kind of hear it uh, yeah. straight from you. This, you. Is, this was awesome. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's not often you get sports. Uh, a very uh, uh, a touching story. Uh, there's so much about your story that I believe would uh, resonate with our audience, our Detroit oh, sports yeah. audience. Yeah, yeah. Like this is about life, but it's also about sports, which we didn't even talk about that much. So, um, Wendell, thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We talk about guys. Detroit versus everybody. It includes all of Detroit, yep. even Metro Detroit. Yeah, yeah. And definitely, man. It's it's cool. It's not just a story. It's something that hits a little bit more home because you are from here as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. On oh, the way out? I think, oh, it's on me, I think. And it's you. What if I? Yeah, and you were, you were yeah, he was uh, on the defense, right? Linebacker. Linebacker. Yeah. Hey, I'm sure you were pretty good, too. Yeah, I was all right. <laughs> I wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody else who isn't too bad with defense. That is Guardian Alarm. It's a new year. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts. Our professional technicians, they take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. It's 24-7 professional monitoring. Call us anytime, day or night, and know that a Guardian team member will stay on the phone as long as needed. It is technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and people have been proven to care. Call 1-800-STAY OUT. If you're Darren McCarty, the Claude Lemieux, 1-800-STAY OUT.
After a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. At work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod, perfectly fried clam shrimp platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango IC, the ultimate complement to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Shake Shack and Woodward Sports want to remind you, it's always football season. How would you like to win two free tickets to this season's home opener? It's the Shake Shack QB Challenge. If you can throw it on a rope, you could be at the home opener. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack location at WoodwardSports.com or scan the QR code right there. It was a perfect storm. Uh, you, you go back, I, to me, to this day, that's hockey 101, that game. We kind of knew it was going to be a, a, a big night that night. It was, you know, the anticipation that something was going to happen was obviously very high. I just remember you could tell it was going to happen. Can't never really like, set it up and plan it, but it just kind of, things aligned, the stars aligned on the ice. McCarty found it way out there at the same time as when you, so you had a good feeling something was going to come. Away from the play. Now Darren McCarty gets his shots in at Claude Lemieux. And look who came all the way out to try to help. Patrick Waugh. Vernon and Waugh. Lemieux was hammered by Darren McCarty, and he is being helped into the locker room. 301 days since the hit on Chris Draper. What up, now, Detroit? Let's go! Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. We got another Detroit legend in the building. It is 326 fight night at the Joe Day. And you know we had to have Mr. Darren McCarty in the building. Talk about that night a little bit. Chat family is always your very, very important part of this family and this show. Smash that like button if you already have. And definitely encourage somebody else to do the same. And you know what? Mr. d -Mac. What up, Kool-Aid? Flannel said that he would put that moment in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I told, what, did I, what did I tell Flannel when I walked in here? Hey, what, what, was, what was the warning I gave Flannel when I walked he in said, here? He said, look, you can mess with me any other day of the year, but on 326 day. Don't do it. You're taking do your it. life into your own hands. I saw a beautiful picture of your family. That uh, Congratulations, Flannel. So uh, the fact that you said that, um, I don't know how to take that, you know. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're setting me up, but uh, I appreciate even you, right at the end of the day, can recognize uh, 
you know, what an integral moment is if we're talking about it 27 years later. So guys yeah. leave flannel alone. I mean, it was it was the fight. It was the win where you got the overtime game winner. It was the win against Colorado in the playoffs. It was the Stanley Cup win. It was just it was all that a four leg parlay of just amazing moments in the 97 season, which is one of the most memorable seasons in the history of Detroit sports. Yeah, you don't have to you know be a Hall of Famer to have Hall of Fame moments. And sure. uh, my uh, somebody somebody just tweeted and I responded to him. They and this is how I always think about it yeah. um, is the fact that they said, "Oh, he took D Mac took him into the alley and then you know finished, finished <laughs> off the job by scoring a goal." And I like to say, "No, no, no! I slayed the dragon and got the girl." Let's right? go. Yeah. So Let's the, go. But, but the biggest, but the, and here's where I'm going to tie it in. What it means 27 years later. Yeah, that was a moment, right? And we saw what that moment created. But I go back to after scoring the goal behind the net, celebrating with Vladdy and Shanny, and there's a big hug. There was this electricity and whatever vibration or whatever that it was the moment of, <sighs> it's going to be all right. I don't know what it means, but it's going to be all right. And that wasn't just in the team, in the city, in the state, in the country. Everywhere there were Red Wings fans at that moment yeah. because it was always climbing the mountain and falling down and everybody neil will sit here and we'll talk on big d energy and he'll tell us i didn't think you'd be able to do it because he's honest with me and then there was a lot of people in that way but the fact that galvanized us and that was a moment mm -hmm. the second time i've had that feeling right is why i stick to the hashtag wiser plan 1919 was when he was reintroduced steve eisman as our gm and vice president that was another moment of oh my god it's going to be all right don't know what it is we're growing. We're progressing. Um, the best part, too, now, all yeah. you kids, man, all you 5, 10, and 15-year-olds are now 30, 35, and 40. Yeah. Right? We're talking. You look at the, the, the program, the, the facts. So, so maybe when you were 5, maybe yeah. if you were born, you know, let's just take, you know, everybody born in 1990 or, or further. Yeah, you have some memory of that, but you don't, in the grasp of life, realize that in life and in sports bad things will happen you can't lose respect for a human being because karma right. is real you got to keep your stuff straight because now that you're married and now that you've had bills and now that you got a mortgage and all this stuff life has hit you you go wow and it, to and to me to be able to carry that also being the the stepchild from across the border to walk up in the detroit sports to be able to have this moment it's um you know, something that I cherish, and you guys know me, is is that I take it very serious when I'm at I'm at LCA and when I'm representing the Red Wings because this is all about us. Mm -hmm. This ain't about me. This is about us. Because, yes, sir. and this is what I always say. I was just there. I did what every other man, woman, child, no matter what age it was, would have wanted to do in my position. Is just the fact is is that I've always believed is that. Um, there's no what ifs right wrong or indifferent. There's no what ifs and I wasn't gonna let that moment I wish for that moment. I, I I'll caveat this with uh, Here's here's for everybody out there who's struggling if you don't know this and the people around me know This is uh, the first time I ever tried to get sober was that season So wow. I'm going through this the whole year after this happens to Drake sober trying to figure out how I'm gonna get this guy you know, we've all thought about it that I got on my knees at the beginning of March and I said, God, I can't do this anymore. Just whatever happens, please let me be the messenger. <laughs> do you think you listen? <laughs> Tell Even Flannel can't argue with me the fact that he listened. Hell of Did I think it would ever play out? That? Absolutely not. <laughs> Scorsese, Coppola. Spielberg, yeah, yeah. no great, the yeah. greatest. Alfred Hitch, nobody could have wrote that. If you gave me the nope. paper and said, here, it's your day, do whatever you want, I would have come up short. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, so that, that, I mean, if you think about it in, in that aspect, so everybody out there, no matter what, just keep grinding, keep your head down. That's yes, why it's so important. Hey, that yes. message is right on point. Yes. So uh, with all that being said, and another thing I have to add in, as only Flannel would, 97 was your career high in regular season points. Yeah, but the, and, and just like Flannel, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Who gives yeah. a fuck about the regular I season? Yeah. I know you do. Because that's what you live on. I live on the four championships and then Stanley Cup rings that I have and the fact that I never missed the playoff game. Um, you know, look at my look at my playoff games played in yeah. league history. That's more important because to me at the end of the day, that's where you get all the jewelry.
Well, I mean, but I like jewelry more than you do, Sam. You like stats. Sure, but like still, that, <laughs> that's important to me because I'm going to ask this question. Was 97 your most memorable season as a professional? Well, personally, I mean, if you ask DMAC that, yeah. What are yeah. you, fucking stupid? It scored the goal. I got yeah. all the fucking yeah. goals. I mean, it was like, like, but no, but with Darren, it does, you know. No, um, I, I believe just there's a lot of different messages and and if i'm talking about that you know the the, the comeback you can't tell like this moment and then also too i did something that nobody else has ever done play in the i play in the a and win a cup coming back after being right mm. like and and yes sam I wasn't the integral piece <laughs> to that puzzle. But you know what? You asked any of those guys that they needed me in that locker room. Not as much on the ice, but in that locker room. So they all have different storylines. Hey. And you know what? The one thing I don't remember, Sam? Yeah. Regular seasons. You, you know what? We got some requests from the chat. John F. and Lord, show us a recap I'm not of what you did. i today. No. <laughs> so, no. Chuck Brewer, d -Mac. can you show us using Sam how the fight ah. <laughs> No. You at least got to give us the polls. It was, at least give us the oh, polls. Well, the turn, you know, like, like that's, like, and if you look at that picture behind me. Yeah. If you ever see this, Woo. right here, there's an indentation in my hand that can only happen when you're in rage. Ooh. <laughs> when, you, when you're in rage mode, anybody who's ever been in that mode, because I'm trying to stick my fist through his skull and rip his heart out through his nasal passage, <laughs> even though anatomically I know that's not possible. Don't yeah. with that, I was still trying, but um, like I didn't get him until, hand. like, like I, that's as much of felonious assault in the textbook because I took him from here and smashed his face against the board and then need him in the head to this day. He's got a welt <laughs> on his head when he looks in the mirror to remind him not to be stupid. You know what, look, we're Time not gonna we're not gonna go to break. Let's get these last reads done and we'll finish up with um with Darren McCarty and this fight day. Man, we gotta celebrate fight night at the Joe. It's epic. I remember when ESPN came out uh, a couple years back and did the uh, the anniversary of it. Here's the, here's the, guys, as they're getting ready to do that, this is your routine. You're going to, after we're done here, you're, you're going to maybe take a break and throw on the highlights, or maybe if you get a chance to watch that, you're going to tune into Big D Energy as Neil and hey. I will, and Kenny and Spencer will continue talking about this and every great things. And then you got to go watch ESPN's Unrivaled, yes. right? Which was the interview when I sat down with Claude Lemieux and they did both sides of the story and stuff. Why I love that 25 years later, and this is what I say about Claude Lemieux, listen, and everyone goes, oh, you're buddy buddies with Claude Lemieux now. And I go, here's the best way to describe it. If you were on the ice with Claude Lemieux today and you turn your back, you are an idiot. But off the ice, I'll turn my back. Because you know what, in life, also like karma, you will see that I think that he realizes what he what his mistake he made mm -hmm. and you know what as red wing fans you better be grateful to that man because he changed the trajectory of uh, the course of w where we were at man. so so go watch espn's unrivaled and the best part about that is because usually we only get the story from the victors you get both sides yeah, yeah. and i come out of there with with more love and respect for patrick wall than i ever have because that's the most human i've ever seen him so Ooh. um go check it out and then and then dial it in because the Red Wings game tonight in Washington is the biggest road game of the year. I mean, mm. it, it's playoff time. Patrick Kane said it, everything like that. We'll touch on it, Big D, but that's all I wanted to say. Go to your read, Sam. Fuck, yeah. you're late. Let's go. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm, cause, cause, cause my, I'm just kidding. But a visit Dispo Dispensary. Yeah, DMAC up here. Uh, t today for exclusive oh, new deals. I was already there. And experience a team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere mixed with fresh inventory for Michigan's largest variety of products. Save the date for 420 at Dispo Dispensary. Dispo is putting on epic events at all locations. Stay tuned for more details. Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com, your local cannabis plug. And what about some crispy chicken? What's better than crispy chicken and pizza while you're watching ESPN Unrivaled? Let me tell you about Soroki's Crispy Chicken and Pizza. Their food is amazing. Their locations are popping up all over Metro Detroit. A perfect takeout option featuring hand-breaded fried chicken, New York pizza, fresh salads and sides, and so much more. Check out the full menu and find the closest Soroki's near you at Soroki's.com. Once again, that is S-A-R-O-K-I-S.com. Soroki's and ESPN Unrivaled? Nah, that's crispy, baby. And Kool-Aid, what about Les Stanford? 
That is that is me. Oh, well, I don't know what about less time. Hey, <laughs> what happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. This is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service that customers have come to know and trust on Woodward Avenue just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford in Dearborn today at lesstanford.com. Les Stanford Chevrolet together. Let's drive. Let's drive. Let's right drive. Down Woodward. And you know what, Darren, you were talking about the Unrivaled documentary. It was so cool to be in the building. I know they had it down at Fifth Avenue. Yeah. The Woodward family was there to support as well. Just how, how was the atmosphere? Like, like how is, where's your mind at all these years later, sitting down face-to-face -face doing this interview? It's, it's, life's about timing, right? So it was the perfect timing. And I mm -hmm. think respectfully, everybody who was in attendance, yeah. There's one thing is that what I love about my fans, my true fans, is that they know how to act. You know, they know they know how to act. They know when it, you know, if it's yeah. push comes to shove or whatever else. But respectfully, and in that building, I, I, it's the greatest thing. There's two great things that I love, right? And you've seen it at Joe Louis Serena. And if I'm at Joe Louis Serena or I'm signing autographs yeah. or whatever, I will take the time. So Everybody gets their moment. But in saying that means that the person who's 100th in line it's gonna be a minute, yeah. but the respect that they have for each other, just like they did that night to listen, because it's one of these things, and, and this is what I try to take pride in, is that people might say, what the fuck, DMAC, is what are you doing? <laughs> but they will check it out, because they know that there's a reason behind it, and that's the one thing with Woodward Sports, with what we do here and stuff mm -hmm. like that, about being about the people, Right? Yeah. What do I always say? It ain't about the sports, about the people. And the people, the people to be in attendance and you guys being there to, in, a, in a tough situation. Now, without getting too deep, it's like what I realize my role in this life and who I am is my heart virtue, which makes me tick as vulnerable truth with integrity. So anytime these moments come up, yeah. right? The cannabis, the, the this, make, having a tough conversation, I'm your guy. Definitely. Yeah. And you know what? You're a man true to your word. Uh, behind the scenes, he's always encouraging us to make sure, and it's our, it is our endeavor, but he's always encouraging us, make sure you put the people first. And when we were there, when they were honoring you against the Colorado Avalanche uh, about a month, month and a half ago, maybe about a month ago? About a month. Was, yeah. 22nd, yeah. February yeah. 22nd. So yeah. it was, yeah. Yeah. It was just a over ago. a month ago. Cool, we, right? we saw it in person. I, uh, someone came, shut down the line. We're like, okay, he's going to be done doing autographs soon, but it was still a bunch of people in line waiting for autographs and then all of a sudden we noticed you went and had that uh had that blockage kind of removed so that all the fans that were waiting each one of them could get their time with dmac and it's not just an autograph it's not just a picture but you were taking the time to actually answer questions yep. laugh uh, talk about the different memories and the moments it was awesome to see you know we had our wake up with we crew with boots on the ground in the building and it was really really cool to see and, and we were there because D-Mac is a man of his word, made sure to get us uh, some credentials, get us into the building, had us treated nicely uh, all around. It's like from what you do on the ice to protect your teammates to what you do here at Woodward Sports. And uh, with all your fans, it, it, it's all one and the same. If you remember, we're all in this together, no matter what. And we all have our difference of opinions and we might not agree with each other all the time, right? Yeah. But. Uh, but that's what we love, and that's about being the Detroit. What I always say, it doesn't matter if you're from here, if you come here, if you love here, you will get love back. Hey. And, and, I, and I am the number one, but you can't be the number one stepchild because that's my role. <laughs> you know what? That is a word. That is a word, man. It's time. I don't even want to, man. This show has been awesome today. Yeah. I don't even want to break it down. From Wendell Brown Sr., thank you for being here, sharing your awesome. story. Yeah. And encouraging us as well. Thank you, Broder, for, for hooking it up, man. It was this was dope. Yeah, for Mr. Darren McCarty, the legend, Detroit Red Wings man. legend, man. 326 today. You guys already know we gotta celebrate the people we know and the people we love whenever we get opportunity to. And this guy has one of those legendary moments that we're gonna take the time to definitely point out. Fight night at the Joe. Look at that, man. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like my wedding photo. <laughs> oh, the third one. <laughs> third wedding. So you have seven rings. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Just five. <laughs> Let's break this down. Hey, look. <laughs> we got Detroit's number one draft pick in the sound booth over here, Mr. 
Okay, G, you know it. I appreciate, hey, this was a dope show today, man. Pleasure is all mine. I appreciate working with y'all, man. And let's keep doing it, man. Let's keep going. Let's rock. Over here in the TD booth, it's Tuesday, <laughs> Diddy booth. We got Wilbur Sports MVP over here, Mr. JB Smooth. J Pizzle. Hey, Shout out to the show, fellas. Love this yeah. show. Shout out to Stick back there behind me. Nice hoodie you got on, too. Hey, yeah, yeah, flash yeah. that yeah. hoodie, man. New, new. I like that. I like that. Hey, hey, visit the Wilbur Sports merch shop. All y'all got on the Wilbur Sports merch in that booth right now, man. Dope. And you guys all know I love when we got our guy Flannel on the show as yes. well. He is the veteran of our starting five, man. Shout out to Flannel Sam. Thank you, brother. Oh, thank you, guys. It's always a good day when I can uh, break down J.J. McCarthy highlights. <laughs> and talking Even about Darren McCarthy. Here here. And talking to Darren McCarthy and talking to our Wendell Brown senior as well. Hell Let's of a day. go. This has been an epic day. Mr. Broder, you got to find a way to get into the camera, bro. Right here, I'll you down there. So I'll much, so here, much, here. man. Shout out to Matthew Broder, our Detroit Lions, Detroit yeah. Tigers, credential beat writer and reporter. Thank you for all that you do for our show, man, and our crew. Thank you. Yeah, this was fun. This was awesome. Inspiring. This, yeah, this was awesome. And it's your boy Brandon Dent, a.k.a. Detroit Kool-Aid, your credential Detroit Pistons beat writer and reporter. This has been Wake Up Woodward. I hope you all have enjoyed the show. Definitely hit that like button on the way out. This has been Wake Up Woodward.